Welcome everyone to the Recreation Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, we do have a quorum, so we shall uh, call the meeting to order. And the first thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I think everyone's had a chance to motion to look. approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Ayes have it. Approval of uh, next item, approval of minutes. Uh, March 28, 2016, May 23rd, 2016 meetings. Mm -hmm. I think you already seen that on our email. If you want to take time to look at it again or if anybody has any objections. Motion to approve. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, nobody opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, minutes approved. Next item, welcome new members. We want to welcome our, we have two new members tonight, Bernard Lane. Yes, sir. Bernard, welcome. Thank you, sir. Hello. Good to be here. Good, and uh, Anita Thornhill. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to be here. Welcome to have you. Well, we would just like to officially welcome you. We have a little uh, gift from, uh, on behalf of the city. It's a pin. Uh, we did give them a brief orientation a few minutes ago, but we appreciate your time and your effort here with us. So you're sitting next to some really great folks. So if you have any questions, by all means, you're welcome to ask at any time. Michael, you have anything? Oh, okay. Thank you. Anything y'all would like to say or anything? Yeah. We want some background information. Yeah, background. Uh, anything you'd like to <laughs> tell us? Any back, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Yeah, this is your wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Benita Thornhill. I've been living in Jacksonville uh, for about two years. Um, I like this city. <laughs> Coming from the north is um, very friendly. And I enjoy going to the parks, taking my kids to the parks. So I'm very excited to be able to be a part of this process. Well, we're very glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Benoit Lane. I'm retired from the Marine Corps. I've been living over three years now. Been in Jacksonville on and off for the last 27 years. <laughs> uh, my wife is originally from here, and uh, we had came into our mindset that we was going to stay here, be part of Jacksonville. So I think you're going to be, if you want to live in the city, you should be a part of the city and things you should do with the city. So we're glad to be here. And um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad Benita came with me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Glad you all on our committee. It's a great experience. Uh, director's report. New Mr. business. Ross, before we start yes. with the director's report, can we uh, uh, identify two of our members who uh, were reappointed and oh, would okay. like to recognize them <coughs> tonight? And that would be uh, Homer Spring. Yeah. Thank you again, as always, for being a part of our our board. And, and he got a haircut for it. <laughs> Giovanni. Miss Reddy. Reddy's fine. Okay. Thank you both uh, from Susan and I and all of us in the city. Thank you both for uh, spending time with us uh, every other month and helping lead us and uh, taking care of recreation and parks as we continue to move forward. Congratulations. Would you all like to make a comment? Does this Lord? include free dinner? Free dinner. <laughs> That's a nice pen you have. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for noticing the haircut, Lori. <laughs> okay, director's report, new business, old business. I'm going first, right? Okay, so um, it is uh, middle of summer, and everybody is very busy in my uh, wheelhouse as far as summer programs go. Everything's been very good. The summer has been smooth, and we're on the downward slope. So as long as we can carry out with a safe um, end of our summer, we'll, we'll keep doing that. Uh, Year-round school has started at Northwoods uh, Elementary School. I do want to let everybody know we are able to add. We'll be starting... Once the summer day camp ends, we'll actually be adding a before school program at Northwoods Recreation Center. We put out uh, an interest from the parents' standpoint, and we have enough to warrant a before school program at Northwoods Elementary. So we're excited to be able to offer that new service. So um, uh, also, we have been very nice. Um, well, we've 
We've hosted some really nice tournaments in the last few weeks. Two weeks ago was East Coast Invitational. For those of you who don't know, this was the uh, closing out the 15th year anniversary for that very, very large uh, basketball tournament. 28 teams from all over the state came in and played, and they played for three solid days and stayed in lots of hotels. So about 300 hotel rooms total, 100 hotel rooms per night. So. Uh, everything went really well, and uh, we're, we're just glad to be able to host them again this year. We just finished out this past weekend um, ISS International Senior Softball also this past weekend. It was warm, but everybody went home safe this past weekend, but we hosted 14 um, teams all, of, all from all over the North, North and South Carolina. So uh, we're busy. We're doing lots of programs. Special events are going well. We've been rained out. Unfortunately, a couple of times with these storms that pop up on our co summer concert series, uh, but we've been able to reschedule one or two of those, and then the, the movies have been able to fortunately just move inside. So we've had a really nice lineup of programs and hopefully rescheduling on one of our summer concerts. Uh, other than that, I think that should be about it. Um, yeah, just getting through the summer and tournaments are done, and everything's good on our neck of the woods. Any questions before I turn it over to Michael? Okay. Well, the first thing I want to tell you is thank you all for coming out to the opening of the Splash Pad. A great oh, yeah. event. We appreciate your support. It means a lot to see the faces there. Thank you so much. And um, as you know, the Splash Pad is doing well, and I'm going to let Susan tell you a little bit more about that right now. Uh, it's been a blur. So, yeah, I apologize for not <laughs> okay. mentioning that. I can't believe I didn't. Um, as you know, we opened up Labor Day weekend, a Memorial Day weekend, and it has been nonstop ever since. The response from the public has been absolutely phenomenal. We could not have asked for better feedback and better uh, um, uh, just really support, honestly. It's been, uh, have you been out there, Steve? You're Several times with my granddaughter. Good, and, uh, good. There, I mean, there won't be one or two kids. There will be like... 30 and 40. Yeah. It's just, it's, it is. It has been. They're all running around having a great time. Yeah, we've been very fortunate that everybody's been really polite and everybody's just very fortunate when we've had maintenance issues. We have to shut it down for an hour or so. Everybody's like, well, it's fine by us. We're just glad it's here. So, really, the support has been phenomenal. And we have luckily, we've had a pretty, I'm not going to lie, a pretty big learning curve because obviously this is our first aquatics facility for the city. But um, we've got some really great uh, city employees and team people that have just really pulled out the stops to make it happen and, and keep that thing running every day, all day. <laughs> and then keep those kids cool. So it's been nice, but I'm, I'm glad you've, your kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'll go there a little before 10 and there's a ton of people waiting for yeah. it to turn on. 10 o'clock. They're already in the parking lot. Yep. I resemble that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you see, you're one of them. But, uh, yeah, it's been a really nice, uh, it's been a nice thing to be able to provide the, for the summer. So uh, we have a few more weeks left on that. We will be closing after Labor Day weekend. So we'll go through the what, first weekend in, um, in September. So uh, the other thing we also did this summer, uh, a few weeks ago, June, I want to say June 9th, we opened up Georgetown Fitness Trail. That was a nice event. And, I give all the credit to Michael and his guys for getting that trail in, getting that fitness equipment in, and currently they're working on a fabulous playground. But we had a nice opening out there. Um, we had some folks came out. We partnered with Partnership for Children and some other agencies and just wanted to let the citizens there know and obviously citizens abroad know about this nice amenity for the city. For the city. And the exercise equipment is completely free. Uh, you just go out there and, you know, your body weight helps – it helps work it through, and so you can make it as great as you'd like. So we're real excited to be able to offer that also. Um, and Michael can probably hit on the playground over there. So, yeah, those are two big things for us. So I'll jump right on that and keep going with the playground at Georgetown. Um, we do have a new playground piece installed over there. Um, we are hoping that by the end of this week our surfacing will be installed and by next week the playground will be operational to the public if you haven't had a chance you can ride by and see it it's a neat piece it's it's a little bit by, uh, of a hybrid piece we when we purchased the wooten park playground uh, it was a different type of playground and um, every playground we have other than that is what we would call traditional playgrounds 
And what we did with this playground is we, we kind of put them together a little bit so we have a little bit of an element of like what we have at Wooten where it's climbing and then we have another piece of it where it's more traditional so we hybrided them together and hopefully we'll get the best of both worlds as we move forward. Uh, so just be aware of that. Once again, I want to jump back to Jackie and Mia. Thank you so much for coming out. That means a lot to see all the faces there. It meant a lot to us as staff. Uh, it meant a lot to my staff as well as Susan's. Uh, it means a lot to see your faces there. The, the, they recognize that. We recognize it, obviously, but our staff recognize it too. So uh, thank you. Hopefully uh, you, you saw the good work that we have done as far as uh, – the landscaping out there and some of the paver work that the park staff was able to do. And, and then uh, as we are still continuing to build what I call a fence line on the back wall of the property there for aesthetics. And uh, we are continuing to put uh, some trees up little by little as time goes by. This is a long process, but you know, one step at a time, we'll get it done. So be aware of that. Um, Wooten Park. Uh, the one neat thing about putting the playground in at Georgetown is there was an existing playground there, and it was really, uh, w was a little bit, had some issues with it, but we were able to take it out and be careful taking it out ourselves, and we were able to repurpose it over at Wooten Park. So where we have, hyb where we have a hybrid of uh, playground equipment at Georgetown now that's new, we've taken a traditional piece that we had at Georgetown, an older piece, but we're going to repurpose it. We've put it up in Wooten, and now we kind of have a hybrid play playground there too. So it's not just a climbing playground now. If you want to do some other things with slides and things like that, so again, giving you some more options in our, our public, a little bit more options uh, to utilize the playground in, in different areas in our community. So just be aware of that if you haven't seen it. Um, and the last, last but not least, and I uh, just want to make everybody aware the Grove is doing well. Our trees are doing well, our, our roses are doing well, the grass is doing well. I'm real happy to report that the grove is good right now. <laughs> and before I, I pass this back to Mr. Ross, uh, I think uh, I know someone asked last week about uh, kind of getting an idea of the park staff and what they do for mowing, you know, and uh, I think we have a map here. Yeah, you should um, pick it. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This will be the start of it here. So this is it's kind of going to be just an overview for you. And, and what, what we've done here is put this map into like three different maps. And while you're looking at that, I'm going to talk to you and, and kind of give you a giant overview of who we are and what we do. Okay. So we basically mow from where the grove is, which in some ways is the DMV all the way back to Piney Green Road on both ends, on the 17 side and the 24 side. So kind of like everything in the middle, and not everything, but I will tell you, 95% of what's in the middle between those two points, we're maintaining. So just to give you a sense of where the boundaries are of what we're doing. So on this map, you can see down here at the bottom, the grove and then, um, Sturgeon City, and I'm just going to highlight some of these areas here in Phillips Park and the city cemetery and, 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 and you know, over in here is Jack Amiette. So again, just giving you a good idea of areas that we mow. And now when you see park areas in here, these are about 250 acres of what we're mowing of, of parkland. And we mow probably another additional about 200 acres. What's the red? Well, we do mow some red. So then you'll see on this map, Northeast Creek, and you'll see Huff Drive. If you're not familiar with Huff Drive, now we mow, mow the Huff Drive that is from Bell Fork Road to Western Boulevard. So that area of property right there, we're mowing that just like we mow the parkway from, I call it Gateway North, to the first exit. And I think you're pretty familiar with the fact that we also mow um, Western Boulevard. And then again, you'll see the, the interchange in Highway 17 right here and continuing to mow. So again, trying to give you a sense of where we're at in the city. And, and as of right now, we have basically four mowing crews in the city. 
There are times some of those crews are together because the property we're mowing is large and we need more than one crew there to get it done in a timely fashion. But basically, we're set up kind of geographically that where, for the most part, this crew is going to be in this section of the city. We don't run over and crisscross and try to, so we try and set them up to be as efficient as possible to stay in those areas of the city to get their schedules done in that manner. So again, you can see the Jacksonville Parkway, mm -hmm. Branchwood Park, some of the other smaller areas we're doing, Western Boulevard, obviously the Commons, the water plant. You know, one of the areas we maintain in addition to parks that you may not think of are, you know, public safety, the police department, fire departments, or the fire services, all of them. There's four areas, uh, public services. Um, you know, so a lot of different places we hit to mow. Um, we don't mind doing it, but, but as you can see, different areas, and I hope this answers the question of the member that asked, hey, give us a sense of where you're at and what you're doing. I would tell you we are, we are everywhere within the city in different areas each day, uh, and we mow generally on a seven-day cycle. If you see us mowing it this week, you will see us again at the same, somewhere around the same time next week mowing it. There's, there's, there's a, you know, the trail's a good example. Generally, we try and mow the trail every 10 days. Uh, but other than that, we're pretty much on a seven-day schedule for most of our mowings. Any questions about that? Michael, where uh, Jacksonville Parkway crosses 17, there's a little blurb to the uh, upper part of that. Mm -hmm. What uh, What is that? It's, it's fenced in. It's been cleared. Is that going to be a park some today? Or what? There's no park there, and I'm not 100% sure of which area you're talking about, but there is a piece of property over there that's still DOTs. Okay. That is it the area where the trailer was, and they used to kind of live out of as they built Highway 17? Well, if you look at where 17 and the Jacksonville uh, cross right there, mm -hmm. on the upper side there's a circular mm -hmm. green area. This one. Uh, that's on the where, top side? That's where the Mazda dealership no, used This one right yeah, here? Yeah. That's yeah. where... It, that's an interchange area that they know. Yeah, that's an interchange. Uh, yes, but it's I guess to be developed. Well, there, are, there, there's not. I don't know anything to be developed there, but there are learned long-term, long-term plans. Let me say that again. Long-term plans. There's been discussions about doing something, uh, whether either through wildflowers or something for that area. So it's not, you know. We like landscaping a lot in our area, and one of the you know one of the pluses about landscaping is you don't have to mow it every week. So, minimal m maintenance comes with landscaping. Uh, a little bit more expensive on the front end, get your payback in aesthetics and price in the long run. Uh, that's an area though that has been talked about. That as we continue moving down the road with our our partnerships with the Department of Transportation, what to do with that area and and who and when. Will people maintain it? That's a great question, though. Any other questions? But are you looking for suggestions of what to put in there? Not at this moment, but <laughs> but we'll take them. I mean, right now we're not in any active agreements with them for that area. As a matter of fact, I meet with the Department of Transportation tomorrow to look at our mowing areas and what we're doing, and and to make sure as we uh, continue to make sure our agreements are are, are what they are that yes we are mowing these areas or or no we don't mow this area you know we want to make sure we're doing what we say we're doing any other questions if you guys ever need assistance you know i have a, on my bucket list equipment to run i can always come out and assist <laughs> okay right. we'll keep that in mind <laughs> they're with us all right all right well okay anything else I have a couple questions. What's the status on the amphitheater behind the? Uh, yeah, that's uh, a that's a great question. City Chevrolet. I mean, I'm you know, city, that's Charlotte. I'm you, sorry. Uh, I'm going to try. And, I'm going to try and answer that for you, and Susan can fill in the gaps. You know, to make a long story short, is the amphitheater. The reality is, it's it's behind. Now, some of the reason it's behind is because the dirt over there isn't the best of dirt, and unfortunately, when it the way it was, uh, the way it was moved and packed in the piles, it was very, very wet. And I know it's hot out, but when it gets to be so wet, they can't move it because their equipment can't get in there. And what was happening for a while was 
it'd be dry for a couple of days and then it would rain. And that, that, trust me when I tell you, and Susan will probably smile a little bit at this, I've walked that area and I've walked that <laughs> amphitheater and when you would think it would be nice out and I have ended up in up to my thigh. I mean, literally up to my hip, you know, it doesn't look, it's just not compacted very well. Now, I do know that our engineering people have met with them just recently to talk about ways of accelerating it. I think we're hoping that they can, if they can't move all the dirt at one time to shape it up, to try and break some of it away so the drying process can, can move more rapidly. And I do know they're working towards that. What's your date? What's the date? Well, I think ultimately they're trying to get it done by the end of by the end of the year. The calendar year. Mm -hmm. Calendar year. So to be announced. To be announced. You know, unfortunately, we still have lots of work. But while they have to shape it up, Michael's folks or somebody has to go in there. We still have to actually get landscape and shaping in there and grass to grow and um, hopefully we can get all of that in enough time that next summer we'll be having our concert series out there on nice green grass and not you know not dirt okay next question that's a great question yeah well, next question the, the splash pad since it's been such a big hit is there any plans for putting one somewhere else that might well, be. I, not to sound vague, I think there uh, would like to be plans for the next one. Can I say right now if there are plans? Not definitive plans. I think everybody agrees that it's been a great success and we need to move forward with, with moving um, you know, uh, the plan forward. But we did not identify necessarily when and where, but I definitely think that um, we have the support of mayor and council that you know this is something we need to look at in the future. And, um, you know, move it forward on our CIP plan. Yeah. Okay. Do we still have that property in Carolina Forest by the school? We do. We do. That'd be a good place for it. Well, we have, and, and, and that's, you know, this is good conversation here, and, and just to give you some, some, um, a little bit of information, and I'm not going to be perfect with my information because I'm not an engineer, nor am I a planner, but one of the things we have to look at, look at when, deciding on uh, if we do move forward as a city and deciding to build an additional splash pad. And again, council will make all those decisions whether or not we do move forward and they'll make the decisions basically where we'll move forward and, and that's what they're elected for and, and, and we'll, we'll carry out those, those wishes. Um, however, the cost of the next splash pad well, it'll be unique because we were able to marry in mm -hmm. existing restroom facilities at Jack Amiette. The splash pad is treated and looked at and viewed at currently no different than a pool. Mm -hmm. So depending on where we build it physically, if there's not bathrooms within 250 feet, you have to build restroom facilities. So that will be interesting for all of us to sit down if we do move forward, because obviously if you have to build restrooms, there will be a, there's going to be a cost impact to that. You know, where's the best spot to do this? You know, so. We were very fortunate with Jack Emiette because it already had a parking lot. All that stuff. It yeah. already had restrooms. And, you know, for lack of a better, you know, it already had water for the most part. So we were very fortunate with the location of Jack Emiette. These are all things we're going to have to consider with the next one, and obviously the, that one was built with the block with the community block development grant. block grant. I'd say that it's been, it's been a huge hit. I mean, I'm out there almost every day going past that, and <laughs> it's just tremendous. Um, I was out there a couple weeks ago and talking to not only the kids but parents, and they're, they've already started like a book club. They have a book exchange. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. There, there. But, so. <laughs> Lead, isn't it? So. So I went around and asked, I was like, what, you know, do they like it? And they was like, yeah, can you get like, we have a book exchange. Can you get like a mailbox out here we can put our books in? And I was like, we'll see about that. <laughs> I mean, they're so. We did offer, um, um, Amanda worked on a RFP. We have a ice cream, well, I should say, uh, a vendor out there during the, during the day now. So mm -hmm. we're fortunate to be able to offer cool treats to the kids and have a, um, a vendor out there so that was just something we wanted to be able to provide especially when it's as hot as it, hot as it is so 
that started last week, and so far it's been very well received. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay. I've, I've noticed, um, or a friend of mine told me that, do we have somebody at the, what's it, uh, river walk, the, the dock? area marina. yes marina. The, we remember i think i mentioned to you uh, some time <coughs> ago about um, we have a vendor that is using that space uh, in agreement with us to offer canoe well kayak and stand up paddleboard rentals so they started also on memorial day weekend and they've been running pretty much you know on a weekend basis except for appointments when you call ahead but they've been doing fairly well i think the first month was a little lukewarm as far as just not everybody knew that they were that was an option for the kayak rentals, but I think it's picked up, and so uh, it's been pretty well received. So we do have a vendor down there doing that and utilizing that building because we did renovate and make those restrooms uh, accessible and cleaned it up. And, you know, obviously we're kind of in a holding pattern until we find out from Pardiff about the grant, and then we can kind of move forward with those improvements. Hopefully we can move forward with those improvements. But so far, the opportunity to rent kayaks and stand-up paddle boards have been really nice down there. You can find a, a link yeah. on our web page near the bottom. Then it'll take you to Paddle, paddle NC. NC, and that's who you do the reservations through. And that's also, is, is, is there also the ability to put a kayak in there? Sure, yeah. so. absolutely. We are um, definitely encouraging uh, non-motorized boats. That ramp is not meant and or built for uh, anything bigger than a, a kayak or something along those lines. Go to the landing. It's wonderful. Put your big boats in there. It, not, not at the um, Riverwalk. Now, is that a new ramp or is it no, something we're... it is definitely not a new ramp, and it has a very bad drop-off on the end. So don't... Yeah, Similar to the old Northeast Street Creek. Yeah, it's been those, there since those the 70s. Who can remember. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. We'll get. We'll. It'll be one of those things we'll work on when um, we get. You know, all of all of it kind of worked on at the same time. But we encourage anybody to obviously you can go put your you know your kayak in. We want people to use it. Use it for sure. Um, the building will be open pretty much through the weekend. But we always have restrooms up at Kerr Street Rec Center. Those outdoor. Um, restrooms are always open so by all means you can easily put your kayak in and then you know have the amenities you need afterwards or before so you got, a sign, you got a sign out there or something on, for liability issues what have you there's a waiver participation waiver basically that if you do your rentals through him mm -hmm. yeah but it's the same as any public access point on the water mm -hmm. okay anybody okay, anything else Okay. Next on the agenda is the chair and co-chair elections. Yeah. First would be the chair. Mm -hmm. Nominations will now be open. Mr. I'm going to nominate Lori. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doesn't Mr. Spring take can it? Can I over? second that? <laughs> Yes, yes, Mr. Good. Mr. Spring should take over the chair. I meant to talk to you before we got it. <laughs> <laughs> should take over the chair. We're getting it up on you, Lori. Sorry. I get for being late. I'll second it. Thank you. Glad you can't second. You found out by. I couldn't speed. I would get in trouble. Is there a move to the nomination to be closed? I was in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Jim Wheeler. Jim Wheeler. Is there second. a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Jim, congratulations. <laughs> 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 we just well, have somebody to dodged the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Everybody's happy? Okay. We're going that was, yes. Council liaison well. report. Okay, Planning Advisory Board liaison report, Mr. Spring. This is why I didn't need to be chairman. Oh. Speaking of, um, at our last two planning board meetings, uh, first in uh, 
in May, we looked at a couple of text amendments and a modification to the site plan to the Jacksonville Fire Station. Um, in our July meeting, we spent about 45 minutes looking at a text amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance in, in regards to something called Oxford House, which is not necessarily a halfway house, but it's a type of, of, of for lack of anything better, type of a halfway house, but it's not your typical, it's something federally uh, licensed. And uh, we found out that, that they're protected by the federal government, and so we should make some kind of uh, stipulation in our, our uh, ordinance that protects them and allows them to go in different places, but with certain restrictions like a 1,000 feet between each. Um, Oxford House. And so um, then on the development part, let's see if I can get all this in. Let's see, in May, uh, we looked at um, Academy Sports, which is next to Krispy Kreme, uh, Western Forum Section 2, which is over at uh, Western Boulevard and Henderson Drive, uh, the Aldi store, which we've talked about, I guess, before. That's a, a food grocery store. And um, a proposed Panda Express restaurant with a drive through in the Western Forum development. And then, uh, let's see, in June, um, River of Life has submitted a, um, oh, a plan to construct a new church on a big acre, a big 21-acre tract. Um, Heath Pawn Shop has submitted a plan to rebuild. Um, that's uh, one that burned down. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Steak and Shake on uh, Hampton Inn Way next to, um, I think that's over near. Behind the outhouse. Yeah, behind, yeah. And Academy Sports, I think I talked about that already. And I think that will do it. That's it for me. Where would you say Steak and Shake was going? Uh, Hampton, Hampton Inn Way Inn. next to Hampton Inn. That's why it's called Hampton, Hampton Inn Way. <laughs> Duh, <laughs> figured that out, didn't I? Paul, there was something in the paper a week or two ago about a trampoline. Like that, the five uh, gravity place down in Wilmington, does that come before the board yet? That, as it would turn out, that, that article came out the day of the planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when we discussed at the planning board, you know that picture that you saw in the paper is just it. I mean, it's not a, a plot of land. It's just a what a, a glorified bobcat sitting in a, a lot. So, so as far as we could tell from looking at what we saw there, there's not a lot that they can develop for that. So they must be talking about rehabbing some older building, which at one point I said, well, um, I'd love to see that movie theater rehabbed because, you know, it's sitting there doing nothing right now, and it's, you know, I'm a big person for trying to reuse old buildings. The one where the Kmart... Uh, the yeah, Kmart company. Shopping yeah. Center. So uh, hopefully there's enough interest that somebody will decide to that, that it is something they want to try to do, and uh, we'll get some work done to that building because... You, you, you'd be surprised when somebody takes and refurbishes an old building, how nice it looks and right. what they do. All, you know, all you have to do is look at what's happened uh, as you come into town with, uh, what is it, uh, what used to be Adam and Eve and then Priscilla's and the motorcycle shop and, and, and uh, U-Haul. All of that it looks a whole lot different than it yeah. used to. A lot cleaner, nicer, and uh, the thrift shop is now down there now, and it's just a, they've done a really nice job rehabbing those buildings, which I prefer to, you know, just having to build a new place. Plus, you've already got your water and sewer in. You've already got uh, everything you need. You don't have to put an additional strain on your uh, resources. That's it for me. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Go ahead and do the... Uh, Park reports first. Uh, Wooden Park, the electrical outlet cover between the men's and women's bathroom was tore off, and I put, the, put I found it on the ground and I put it back on the sill, window sill. Um, the park was excellent. It was uh, we had people cooking out, had folks playing basketball. Uh, Perfect picturesque scene, just like a park should be. So, grass had just been cut, and uh, I guess there was a total of about 15 people out there on a Sunday afternoon when it had cooled off a little bit. So, uh, and I saw the new playground. Remind me of when Mark, when I went out to Market Street, 
everything was gone. And, hey, there's a new playground. I mean, we, and uh, it was real nice. They did a real good job. Thank you. Uh, the water fountain works. And it, that was good. But everything else looked really well, and it was definitely being utilized. So they, uh, your, your folks did a really good job out there. Thank you. Know, it looks very neat and clean. Pass that along. Yeah. Okay, Lori. Uh, Richard Ray in comments, and even Jack and Mia, just uh, perfectly beautiful, clean cut. Uh, the shelter sign there at the comments has been fixed, so I appreciate that. Uh, just like Bill said, everything is the you know communities out there running around, enjoying the parks, and that's really nice to see. And uh, like we've commented earlier tonight, the whole splash pad thing—that's just being on the board here and seeing that from start to finish, and seeing those kids out there running around. It's phenomenal, like uh, Susan had said. It's great to see that place packed. Um, my 11-year-old is attending the park uh, summer camp, and she told me to let everyone know that the park's awesome. And this is coming from an 11-year-old. Uh, the staff is nice and not mean. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Start with Branchwood. Everything was fine at Branchwood. It, uh, it, again, it's it's kind of a hall, and, it, and nobody was there when I went, but somebody was coming back from Branchwood Park. I think they were probably dog, walking their dog. Um, but the park itself looks fine. Sherwood Forest, the same way. Um, there's less grass in the playground than there was before, but I guess that's going to be one of those things that just keeps coming up. Um, Phillips, Phillips Park, I noticed... Um, have we done something? Uh, I know the normal barrier around the playground is like plastic, but I noticed a different kind of barrier uh, over next to it. Is that are our plans to replace all the barriers with yes, that? Yes, because that sir. looks a lot nicer than Gives the it a, a little bit better look, more finished, a little more professional look. We uh, we did that last uh, winter. This past winter, we really used that area as a pilot to see how we like the bordering. Some of those borders are old, they're getting dry rotted, and we didn't want to go back with them, so we wanted to try a different type of border, and this was what we tried, and our intentions as this year continues through, especially through the winter, to finish out Phillips Park. Well, and, and I'll, I'll share two stories about uh, um, Phillips Park. I had one was, um, of course, I, I went by Saturday, I saw a lot of people out there Saturday, I wondered what it was, so... I saw that they were having a, what is it, a bubble blast. Uh, oh, good, you yeah. went out that day. I suggest they probably want to call it the Bubble Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> I get a percentage if they put that on T-shirts. Uh, then uh, earlier, uh, probably last month, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, last month uh, a friend of mine had talked about going out to a kayak launch at Phillips Park, and I'm going like, was I asleep that day at the meeting? Did I miss that? And she explained where it was, and I thought, this is an odd place for a kayak launch. Kayak launch. So I started walking out Phillips Park, and I went down where the wastewater treatment lift station is or whatever that is down the end. And sure enough, I looked through the, there were a little path. I looked through the woods, and I saw uh, some wood, and I thought, well, we've got a kayak launch here. Mm -hmm. And I got a little closer, and it was a little muddy and stuff, and somebody had just taken a wooden pallet and just laid it out there and made their own kayak launch. And so I called Amanda. I said, uh, Amanda, I'm here at the uh, Phillips Park kayak launch. And she goes, we don't have one. <laughs> and I go, okay. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I, I thought it was a strange place for a launch, but uh, I'm glad we have taken care of that. Hopefully we won't use a pallet to Thank you. put out a launch. <laughs> I was just looking after a straight liability issue. Yeah. My friend was very concerned because they said, you know, it's really kind of muddy going down there. She didn't talk about the fact that the pallet wasn't <laughs> good, but she goes, it's somebody might slip or whatever, and it just doesn't look up to city standards. And I go, when I saw it, I go, yeah, it probably doesn't because it, it's not. <laughs> and it's nice to know that they think that yeah, when we yeah. do something, we're going to do it first it's class, right. and when they see something that looks like it's been mm -hmm. put together, that they know it's not city, yeah. that somebody, private citizen, had decided to make their own. Good point. That's it. Okay, Steve. All right. Uh, went downtown, Kerr Street, Riverwalk, Willingham. Looked great. There, uh, there was a crew down there putting pine straw around the uh, flowers and stuff, and somebody was cutting grass, and there was another guy blowing all the stuff off the uh, sidewalk. 
it was hot down there. Uh, the usual guys that are fishing on the, uh, the they weren't there because it was so hot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I, I looked at the marina and didn't see any big changes from last time I was there. And I think they said they were open Wednesday through Sunday, something like that. Oh, yeah, it could be. I know that they were definitely Thursday through Sunday, so, you know, they might be. I could be wrong, too. Standing on Wednesday. Uh, the caboose, is that ours? Yes. Because it needs painted. It's got a bunch of rust spots and the red paint's all faded on, on one side. The other side doesn't look near as bad, but the one side gets the sun is not looking too hot, and the rust really doesn't help it at all. Uh, but the rest of it looked really nice down there. Uh, Northeast Creek, there was uh, the first time I've ever been there, there wasn't anybody playing disc golf. Wow. I couldn't believe it, but again, it was really hot. But there were people at the playground. Oh. <laughs> And then there were a whole bunch of, uh, I'm assuming, people using the boat ramp because there were several pickup trucks with empty trailers, so oh, it's uh, usually a good sign. Uh, and it looked good. The, uh, in the playground, there, I'm going to have to call it a teeter-totter because I'm not sure what it is, but it's got two goofy animals and it's supposed to pivot in the middle. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it does not pivot because they put all that sand in there and it's like way, way up there. Spring riders. No, no, those are in a different spot. We'll look at it in a moment. Yeah, it's a... Anyway, you'll see what it is. And, and that's it. The rest of it looked great. Now, when there was somebody working on the baseball fields, they were cutting the grass and stuff. Okay. That baseball field looked great. Jim? Yeah, Northeast Creek, uh, Steve, just... I finished uh, sweeping the, the creek uh, this morning, and uh, the area next to the park probably the cleanest I've ever seen. So, Mike, your people that attend that park, I know you've got one or two full-time people over there doing that, and yeah. they keep the litter pretty well placed up. We'll pass that along, thank you. Uh, Brook Valley. I stopped by there a couple of weeks ago. Very clean, no problems with the equipment, and I stopped by there on the way here tonight, and there was a family. They were under the shelter. They, were, they weren't doing the playground equipment, but I told Michael before, it's probably a little hot to be out there on that uh, playground equipment in weather like this. Uh, Northwoods, I stopped by a couple of weeks ago, and there must be some type of uh, uh, before school program or something going on there because whatever it was started at 7 30. In summer day camp? That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked to the attendant over there, and he said no problems with the equipment or anything. And uh, he was opening the doors right at 7 30 when I got there, which is what was advertised. So uh, that's my report. Okay. Unassigned parks, do you want to? Uh, our TV members, do you want to put them to work or do you want to? Well, it, that or, you know, if they're ready, they can, um, you know, select which parks they think would work best for them or if you want to take the time to go and visit these parks and for the next meeting, bring back what you would like to take. It's up to you, how you however you would like to do that. Well, I kind of already went out. <laughs> okay, that's oh, good. Well, <laughs> At your previous agenda online. So. Oh, great. Perfect. Thank you. And um, I would like to do Georgetown and Sturgeon City. Okay. Mr. Lane, are you? I'll take the rest. Yeah. Jump in both feet right now. Just a comment on Georgetown. I did go out there to look at the whole park and walked it, and the, it looks good. And it's really safe that that uh, bin there where people can cut through now safely it's instead nice. of yeah. It's really nice. It's made a big difference in that park yeah. having that opening in the back. That's great. It gives everybody you know gives access accessibility to the park. It's really nice. Hmm. I'm going to add something real quick in case you haven't noticed. I'm um, just thought when I looked at rails or trails, if you haven't noticed that construction is moving along nicely on the last bit of the trail, I believe they are targeted to finish. Um, September, yes. beginning of October. Uh, so they're working through some other areas. Um, and so you'll see that. And obviously when it gets done, we'll be sure to let you know. Uh, but it's coming along very nicely. And everything is ahead of schedule with that project for the last bit of the uh, trail there to go in front of the Memorial Gardens and, and back down and all that. So we'll, we'll keep you posted. But that'll be the next exciting thing to come online. And Obviously, Mr. Lamb, you certainly don't have to walk all of the rail the trail, but if you're a bike rider, by all means, uh, you can 
certainly give it your best shot, but we appreciate any best shot. That you that's get good. To. <laughs> <laughs> I think once this area gets online, we'll have 20 miles. Yeah, right at 20. Right at 20 miles total um, for our trail system, which is Great. nice. Just in time for the mountains to sea ride that happens this year. Yes, that's Jackson. in October, and you'll all see that come through. But that's a big economic impact. Cycle and Sea is coming to Jacksonville, and it will be uh, all encompassing. Um, it's a huge outfit that will come into the commons with campers, showers. I mean, they'll be inside, outside. They bring in a whole bunch of tractor trailers with a bunch of uh, all-inclusive sort of opportunity and they'll come in and sleep and eat and then back out the next morning and they finish up at the beach the next day but it will be whoop. I think the crews will come in several days ahead of time like Wednesday there's set up crews that uh, work a few days out but in any case we'll certainly keep you posted it should be pretty exciting to see when is this October. first weekend in October yeah I want to say like the 8th 9th 10th what was it called it's Cycle NC, but it's their annual Mountains to the Sea ride. And what they do is they'll start off in the mountains and they rotate their entire route um, north, central, and south. So they'll, you know, go along the north of the state and then central. And so this is the first time they've ever finished up in, in our area. And it won't come back to us if everything goes well. They will, it'll be like a four-year rotation if everything goes well. But... They try to hit towns that are scenic, and not on, uh, you know, not your major towns. So they'll, they, I think they like go to maybe Goldsboro or Rocky Mount the night before. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a very big economic impact because they have lots of people that come in and ride this bike. Ride for yeah. back of the back over the The 10th is uh, Columbus Day, Monday. Okay. It could be because they're finishing up at the beach, so yeah, they're going to finish here and get to Atlantic Beach on like that Saturday. So it might be tying it in as a reward for all those families and riders to do a, you know, a beach weekend, I think is what their, their goal is to having ridden, you know, hundreds of miles for the week. So it'll start on Monday. Yeah. Any other comments? This is my last meeting as chair. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I want to thank the city council and of course the staff uh, Y'all did a great job, Mike, Amanda, Susan, and uh, just thanks everybody for their support. I enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. Look forward to take over. <laughs> <laughs> Are the seats going to yeah. switch? Is yeah. how this is going to work? Yeah. You're going to go over there and she's going to uh, go I'm going to take Jim's place. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck to both of you. So, is there a motion to close? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all.